Jack Piper has been making tea rings as holiday gifts for friends and family for over half a century. When people receive these beautiful, tasty gifts, they frequently ask for the recipe, but comment later that they didn't make the tea rings because it's just too difficult. Jack wanted to show, once and for all, that his special tea rings are not that difficult to make. And while the whole process takes three and a half hours, there's really only a half hour of work for a delicious result. Wendy's melting a half a cup of butter. You could use margarine, but butter's better. I'm going to dissolve three teaspoons of yeast in half a cup of water, or three quarters of a cup. We'll put this in our mixing bowl. Put a little bit of this precious commodity, sugar, with it. Since we only have a half a cup, they just put a little sugar with the yeast just to get it excited and working. And it'll do that. <laughs> where did I put that whip? There, where I put it. Now we're going to mix, mix up some milk. You can use regular milk, but for some reason, dry milk works way better when you're baking. It makes the, the end product nice and smooth and rich. So we'll put in a half a cup of dry milk with a cup and a half of water. There, Whitney, will you mix this up? Get rid of this stuff. You got it mixed up? Okay. Now we're going to pour a little bit of this butter, melted butter in there. We'll put that all back in there so we don't, the idea being not to scorch the milk. Now, Whitney, uh, there's two eggs here. You go ahead and, and stir that. Let me, let me put the other one in too. There you go. <coughs> that should be good enough. Now we'll put that in with our yeast. That's, it's warm, it's not hot. Okay, you can put this over there on that counter. Now, we're put, put five of those dippers in the bowl here. You can count to five. Okay. Good thing you didn't have to count to 20. That'd take your shoes off, wouldn't you? Then we're going to put half a cup of sugar in there, which is about what we got. And now we'll turn it on and let it do the hard work. And basically this does all the mixing, but it also does the kneading as we get down in the process here so you don't have to do any hard work. Mm. 
You also got to spill quite a bit of flour. That's part of the recipe. Maybe not. And this is the, the 50th year I've done this. So I think we've probably given away at least 2,000, maybe 2,500 tea rings. Jack? Yes? Could you explain why you're adding more flour? Why am I adding more flour? Because there isn't enough in there. What, what you do, it's, allegedly it takes about six or seven cups of flour for this recipe. But really, with the dough hook, you put it in until it, it clings to the dough hook, and you kind of go by hand. Uh, and it'll be different depending on the humidity and the temperature. We want to get a uh, soft, firm dough that's a little bit sticky for a, for a tea ring. If we were making a bread, we'd want it stiffer. We still, we still need quite a bit more flour. In this recipe we use makes two tea rings, or you could make you can make half of it. You could make as cinnamon rolls and half as a, the other half as a tea ring. But the tea rings look more dramatic. I got started because when I came home from the Mayo Clinic after the second spinal fusion in a body cast, I was driving Janice. I guess and myself too, crazy, because I had nothing to do for five months, four and a half months. So my sister went and bought me two cookbooks. One was the first 10 years of the Bake Off, so there was a thousand recipes in that. And most of them kind of weird, because you had to use, they had to be different, you had to use a certain amount of flour, and that's the only requirements. And the other one was Better Homes and Gardens, and the Better Homes and Gardens had a recipe for a Swedish tea ring. And I made that. I'd never, I cooked, but I'd never baked anything. But my sister bought that for me, and I got started doing it. And uh, people thought it was wonderful, I guess. And made a fair amount of mistakes. But the question about freezing it, I'm sure you could freeze it, but I don't know how it would happen, and I never wanted to waste a batch of dough. Uh, but I tried refrigerating it one night because about three in the morning I woke up and started a batch of rolls and got half done and ran out of flour. So I said, well, I'll just put it back in the refrigerator and hold it tomorrow morning. I can get some flour for my dad. And so I did that, and I went back to bed and went to sleep. And Janice got up because Jackie, the baby, was about three months old, and she wanted to bottle about four o'clock. And she opened the refrigerator and was attacked by this flower all over the floor. And she didn't see any humor in that at all. So after that, I kind of made sure I had the right ingredients before I started. Witter, I'm going to have you get me some more flour. Can you do that for me? But the biggest thing here is the, is the yeast, good quality yeast, and good quality flour. I use high gluten flour because it's good for, better for baking bread. It holds its shape better, and it rises better. Well, you go, you go get bread flour. I mean, it's that high gluten flour. The first thousand of them, I made them out of all-purpose flour. So they, they work fine. But this, uh, this does raise better, and it does hold, it, hold its form better. My biggest uh, order I ever had was 
when Tim, my baby boy, was in high school, they wanted to go on a senior trip. And the school board finally said they could, but they're going to have to raise the money themselves. So Tim come home and asked me if I could make some tea rings and they could sell them for, to raise money. And I said, yeah. And by then, I'd been doing it for several years. So a few days later, he came home and said they had 90 some of them sold. <laughs> I said, we better shut that off. Well, I don't know. We got a little bit over 100 time we got it shut off. And we got it made. And uh, they got the kids delivered them, so that's still a little bit sticky. You stick your finger in there. If it takes your finger off, then you just use another finger. Okay, we're almost there, which you can see, if you can see. It's, it's now it's hanging on the dough hook. How do I get this? That's how. As you can see, it's kind of sticky, which is the way we want it. You can make it stiffer, but then it's not quite as mellow and soft. So, you can put that in, over in the sink. With. So, it's how do I get this? That's how. It's done mixing and it's kneaded enough, too. The job now is to get it to raise. So we're putting it in a grease bowl. We'll turn it once once we get it all out. So it all it gets greased. And then let it raise for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, now we're going to punch it down. It's more than doubled in bulk, so just punch it. No, punch, yeah, like several times. There you go. There. And then we'll turn it over and cover it up and let it raise again for about half an hour or until it's double. You tired? <laughs> we're, we're done raising the second time, so it's time to divide the dough in half. Put this back in there to rest till we shape this first tea ring. And what we're going to do is let it rest for about five minutes. Before we roll it out. So we're really doing nothing for the next five minutes. Now we've let it raise, we're going to roll it out and try to keep it in a fairly rectangular shape. Roll from the center out like you do for pie crust so you're not rolling all of it too much. And as close as we can get to a good rectangle, the better, the less waste we have. So that's enough. I don't know what that is. That's probably 12 by 17 or 18 inches. We need the butter, Whitney. The melted butter. We put this on here. The purpose is to hold the cinnamon and sugar we're going to put on. Put that back, please. You could do this with a paintbrush, but you can do it with your hand, too. Now 
over there, what you need is a bowl with a bunch of cinnamon and sugar in it. You want to bring that over here? And what I want you to do is take it like this and just spread it all around there. Okay? Put on a lot of it. anything on the counter we'll pick it up with the first one the second one won't have it in it then we want to pull it back and then pinch the seam so it seals up you can stretch it out a little bit but not too much Just give me one of those pans Cut the ends off so we can get it sealed up pretty good. Put it on the tray with the seam side down and pinch these together. And now what I need is a pair of scissors. We cut them about an inch three quarters of an inch maybe, three quarters of an inch I suppose, about two thirds of the way through. There you go. Now let them rest about 30 minutes. And then bake them. 350 for 24 minutes. Turn it in the middle. But some days it takes a little longer, depending on the humidity and the gods of cooking or whatever. So you have to watch it a little bit once in a while. We have powdered sugar frosting. And some people like to use a lot of this. We're just putting on as much frosting as we can get on. And then decorate it a little bit with a, we use three cherries per tea ring, cut them in half. And the reason we cut them in half is because they don't roll off that way. Something to do with the theory about the wheel. There. We're going to put a pecan between each one of them, but put it in the other way so the narrow point faces in that way, if you can. Not too hard.
Frost in the second tee ring. No, I mean, what are we, why are we doing it? Oh, why are we doing it? I don't know, because a bunch of people said they thought it was too hard to do, so we're trying to show them how easy it is to do. Because I'm going to die one of these days, and then there won't be anybody to make these tea rings, unless somebody learns how. And that's why we're training Whitney. <laughs> <laughs>